I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about critical systems, systems on which our society depends. <clears throat> critical systems are not like your normal everyday applications, the word processors, the games, the whatever that you have on your phone and on your laptop. They're systems which are organisation, generally organisational systems and systems which run our infrastructure, which control our medical devices, which provide services to industry. The key difference between critical systems and other systems is that failure of a critical system can lead to loss of life, serious economic consequences or environmental damage. Therefore, the key characteristics of a critical system are those dependability characteristics such as safety, reliability, availability and security. Safety is about the system behaving in such a way that it should never threaten or injure people. This doesn't mean just it should operate correctly, but it means that even if it fails or goes wrong in some way, it should still not cause injury to people or environmental damage. Reliability is the ability of the system to operate without serious failures. Now, obviously, this includes things like system crashes, but it also means that it should be delivering its services as expected by users of the system. Availability is the ability of the system, or rather, availability is whether or not really the system is up and running as expected to deliver, to deliver its services. So therefore, you need, the system needs to be working. There's no point in being stopped. It also, the availability takes into account not just whether or not the system is operational, but also the repair time when it goes down. And security, increasingly important, and I'm going to cover this in much more detail in other, in other videos, but security is the ability of a system to protect itself and its data from malicious attacks. Now we put all of these together and we talk about the system dependability. Dependability is not a single thing. It's not a single thing you can put a number to. It is all of these safety, security, availability and reliability. They're all connected to each other. They all influence each other and they all <clears throat> contribute to the overall dependability of a system. To give an example of how they influence each other, a system may be certified to be safe, but if it's insecure and damaged by a virus, that can make it unsafe. A common security attack is a denial of service attack, which affects the availability of a system. So we can't think of these critical attributes, safety, security, availability, reliability in isolation, but we must look at them all together and we use the term dependability to talk about this. There are different kinds of critical system. The ones we're probably most familiar with and that we've been working with for 30 years or so are safety critical systems. Systems where failure can injure or kill people. And we've been very careful in developing techniques to check and to certify these systems. And by and large, our software systems I've got a pretty good track record in not actually in, in be in not killing people and, and in being safe, although there have been exceptions to this. Mission critical systems are the kind of systems that you could see, say, in a spacecraft where failure of a system affects a broader mission. So there was an example of a spacecraft going to Mars, which failed and it missed Mars. That's a mission critical system, a failure which has really very high economic losses as a consequence. Business critical systems are systems where a system failure has very significant economic consequences for a business. So think about Amazon. A loss of service from Amazon means that it loses its ability to sell goods and it potentially can lose millions of dollars or pounds every hour that that system is out of action. Similarly, with banks, 
their accounting system, their ATM systems, they all lead to serious economic consequences for the business. So these are business critical systems. Finally, infrastructure systems. This is a class of system which has become more important or at least we've become more aware of recently. Uh, these are the systems that run our critical infrastructure, our electricity grid, our <coughs> gas distribution network, water supplies and so on. Failure of these systems can lead to widespread loss of services for the population. And this is something I look at particularly under the issues of cyber security because cyber security or, or cyber attacks could potentially lead to large scale systems failure in our infrastructure system. Critical systems are generally not just standalone systems, but are part of are, are part, they're, they're part of a stack of systems where we need to consider all elements of that stack when we're thinking about dependability. So we need to think about hardware failures, about network, about network failures, about the overall infrastructure systems that deliver things like power, about operating system failures, and as well as failures of the system. Now, obviously, as a developer of a critical system, you can't interfere or intervene with these other systems, but you have to think about the possibility of these failures occurring and with ensuring that your critical system actually copes with these failures or fails in a way which doesn't cause damage in the event of failures elsewhere in the critical system stack. Some critical systems are independent systems. So embedded systems in medical devices, say, are safety critical systems. They're independent. They're not really connected to other systems. We can think of them in isolation and in principle, at least, we can analyze the whole system. We can look at everything in the system and we can check it, we can assess its safety and so on. But the majority of critical systems, critical software systems particularly, are not independent. They're, de they're part of a broader ecosystem uh, and they are dependent on other systems. Uh, the, you have to think about the external infrastructure provision and an example of that kind of system from the medical domain, domain again, would be a hospital appointment system. The thing about critical systems, which kind of comes back to the critical system stack, is that they're not really, they're, they're part of a network of, of systems. They're systems of systems. They interact with a number of other systems in their environment. And the whole system depends on the successful operation of this set of systems, the system of systems as a whole. The thing about critical systems is they're complex socio-technical systems. Socio-technical systems will be the topic of another video, uh, but they're owned and operated by different people. Generally speaking, they're distributed and they have heterogeneous hardware and software. Within the set of critical systems, each individual system may be a member of different systems of systems. And this means that we can get conflicting requirements from different users of the system. And we need to engage in very complex negotiations if we need to make a change because it doesn't just affect one system, it affects a number of different systems. We need to be very careful in designing our critical systems. We need to design them so that they are robust and they, they, they can cope with individual systems within them, can cope with the failures of other systems, just like a critical system has to cope with failures in its critical system stack, like an operating system failure, and may also have to cope with failures in other external systems. In summary then, critical systems are systems on which our society depends. They're usually systems of systems, and their key characteristics are safety, reliability, availability, and security which together make up the dependability of the system. I'll be expanding on this idea of critical systems in other videos, but you can get more information on this topic from my book and you can <clears throat> download these slides from my SlideShare account.